Hey everyone, this is the fifth episode of the Brothers of Broad Street Podcast. I'm here with Bryce Ellick. I'm Jim Crozier. Wow. Um, we just had to do it tonight. I know we usually only post on Wednesdays, but tonight's a special occasion. It's a holiday. It's a holiday. Best day of the year. Best day of the year. A lot to talk about because uh, last night Bryce and I did a mock draft that was just completely not close to the actual draft that happened tonight. But it's okay. Not close at all. Not close at all. The experts that get paid millions of dollars to do this every year don't even get it right. So, yeah. Close. You, Bryce, you got anything to say quick before we get going? I mean, it, the draft, I had high expectations. I knew it was going to be crazy, and it, it lived up to it. It was definitely the, probably the most, probably the craziest first round of our lifetime so far, no doubt. Well, this is all I got to say. Uh, Recap for the Philadelphia Eagles. Bring him. Bring him. I could not be happier with the way the draft worked out. Getting Devontae Smith, it finally feels like that organization did not try to outsmart the statistics or anything like that or beat the math or pick a sneaky player. They just went out and got the best possible guy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my point is, and I said this before and I say it again, every year it happens with everybody in gym. You can agree with me. There's a guy that goes off in the national championship and everyone hypes him up and he's going top three. And then he ends up falling a little bit here and there. And that's why I was so happy with the trade we made because I feel like we still ended up getting the guy we wanted at 10. We get a first round pick next year we get him for a little less money than we had to pay him. And also the, at worst, we gave up a third round pick. I mean, if you really think about it, it's, it's, it's a great move. And what else even makes it look great is also the fact that the Bengals end up taking chase with the fifth pick, leaving us with the sixth pick. If we would have kept it and not knowing what we would have done. I believe when you look at it, um, I think organizations knew like from the get-go, the Falcons weren't moving out of that four spot no matter what. When no, you get a chance, never, you get a- I, I was pretty certain they were going to take Pitts. I still think the Falcons believe for some odd reason they don't want to go into a rebuild. They still think they have one more year left in the tank, maybe two more years left in the tank. I, I, and Pitts is just once in a generation type player. I mean, that, that kid is a freak. He's going to make an immediate impact. He, to me, is already probably a top five tight end in the league. Tony, I know that might sound crazy, but I think he's just going to make an immediate no, I mean, when you look around the league now, uh, you have Kelsey, Kittle, um, who's who's the tight end who had a great season this year for um, Onions? Good for the Green Bay. Maybe not one of the best, but he's good. Uh, no, nah, someone just had a breakout year. Giannis Smith's good. Mark Andrews is good. I'm not, I'm trying to think for you. Oh, uh, Darren Waller. Darren Waller is definitely Darren Waller. Yeah, you have him for Oakland. You also have OJ Howard coming back now for Tampa. Um, he's okay in that yeah. offense though. Yeah, no, he's good. I just think he's, you know, it's tough. A lot of mouths to feed tight end-wise over there. You know, they got three tight ends over there. So. Yeah. But, no, I mean, uh, Pitts, Pitts puts him in, himself in a elite status right now. Because you got to look. Defense is now – they're still have to devote attention to Julio Jones because, in my opinion, he's top two receiver. I think it's him and Hopkins right there. Um, and then you have Calvin Ridley, who's no scrub. And now you throw Pitts in there. So it's not like defenses can, you know, zone in on pits. They're going to have to, you know, spread it out. I actually also found out today they signed Mike Davis in the offseason, uh, running back from the Panthers that had a great year. That's a nice little sneaky signing for them. I mean, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. The Falcons offense, is, it's there. It's, it's a solid offense for sure. But at the end of the day, they're the Atlanta Falcons, Jim, and uh, no one's better – at losing games that they should win than the Atlanta Falcons. And that defense, it's like everybody says, there's no jokes or buts about it. Defense wins championships, and they have, they don't have one. So, yes, their offense is going to be great. Let's just say, I'm going to say it right now, all Atlanta Falcons games just hammer the over. An early Bryce's bet. I had Atlanta Falcons games to just hammer the over. So We're going to do that segment tonight, but we just have to. We got to keep it going. Yeah, no, yeah. For sure. Always. Always. But anyway. I- how do you feel? I want your input on the Bengals pick at number five. Like I said last night, no matter what, um, 
I even think that even say the Falcons traded out of that position, say, um, you know, the bears trade up to that four spot or the Patriots trade up to that four spot or Carolina moved up to that four spot to take a quarterback. And I say, even if the Bengals had Kyle Pitts and Jamar chase on the board with all the other wide receiver talents, they still take Jamar chase because you have to develop some kind of chemistry between your starting quarterback and your wide receiver. When you look around the league, that's crucial. Like look what happened to Josh Allen when the Bills traded Stefan for Stefan Diggs. One th- you're one thousand percent right. Allen went Allen went from a you know fringe top twenty, top fifteen quarterback to MVP candidate. But the issue is, and you just got to agree with me, Jim. Here, it's not like the Bengals. You know, gaining like Chase makes their wide receiver core unbelievably great their wide receiver core is already like a solid wide receiver core they don't have a really bad wide receiver core tyler boyd is solid he's had consistently solid years and t higgins proved himself big last year he can make an immediate impact i'm just saying to me personally penny sue out is a generational talent and i saw uh i forget the analyst that quoted it but i agree 100 percent, and i would bet my money on it too he sure no doubt whatsoever is the hall of famer of this draft like, like if I had to pick one guy that's going to be a Hall of Famer, it is him. He's a Hall of Fame type player. And, I, you know, Chase is obviously the sexy pick. You team him and Burrow back up. Burrow obviously was probably in the coaches and GM's ears saying, hey, I prefer if you take Chase. That's my boy. But I just feel like personally, if I'm a Bengals fan, I'm happy with the pick, but I'd be much more happier with Sue out. It's not the pretty pick. It's, it's not, you know, the, the, you know, the pick you want to see. But Sue out is he's a generational type offensive linemen they just don't come around very often it's great you know and they last forever jim they last 15 years those offensive linemen they play forever you win in the nfl at the lines you win on the offensive line the defensive line i mean that's why when you look at it the eagles when they won the super bowl they had the best offensive line and they had the best defensive line there was, was no, there was no denying that and i see where you're coming from when you talk about a guy like penny suel um the Giants, the the lions got him and that was used they're they're i guess they're all in on jared goff um, but anyway, um, you have to, in my opinion, you need a safety valve for your quarterback. And I'm saying um, Chase is better than just a safety valve. He just gives Burrow so much more comfort because now Burrow already knows that he's going to have his guy Chase when in doubt, when he needs him. You know, um, I think it's going to take these two a couple years to like truly show their potential together. In Cincinnati, because mm-hmm. like you said, Cincinnati still, they weren't just one position away. Uh, they need several positions they got to fill. But I also think uh, Cincinnati is, uh, they still need a new head coach. I think Zach Taylor personally is gone after this year. I think he is, uh, you know, he's going in on his third season. He's obviously had, like, he's been pretty god awful since being there. I'm pretty sure he may have five wins collectively. Yeah. Um, He'll definitely be out of there after this year. They can maybe go out and get like a real off, you know, real head coach. So that I think that will make a huge difference too. People aren't accounting for that. Zach Taylor will definitely not be there next year. There's no doubt in my mind. And then now too, like, um, wide receivers are pretty expensive now. It's like slowly going up. Yeah, they're getting paid. They're getting their guaranteed money. So now, I don't know. The Bengals definitely have a lot of cap space. Are they able to go this year in free agency or in a trade and get an offensive lineman for cheaper than what it would be to go out and get like a Chris Godwin next year or to get well, a top-notch wide receiver for Burrow? Well, my key point is is that I don't think they have too much cap now. They signed Trey, uh, Trey Waynes or whatever uh, to a big deal last year that's turning out to be a bad deal because he's not a top-paid cornerback whatsoever. And they signed uh, that guy from the Saints, Trey Hendricks. They signed him to a big deal. They gave that guy a lot of money. He's also a huge risk. I do say one bright spot for the Bengals is they have uh, Williams coming back, the offensive lineman they took last year out of Bama. He was out the whole year with an injury, but obviously it's good to gain a legit first round. That probably influenced our decision as well. Yeah, that definitely did. But I don't know, Jim, I mean, how, how I see it, and I'm pretty sure most people can agree, and you can agree, Sue out at seven is – possibly I believe probably the biggest steal in the draft that guy should nowhere near should have been on the board at seven uh I get the Dolphins were set on Waddle at six I don't think anything was going to change their mind I think they've been set on Waddle for probably at least a week or two now but uh, to me I mean 
the Lions, they just were literally like, we can't mess this up. We, we have to take Sue out for sure. Sue out is definitely the pick. In my opinion, when you talk about the biggest steal, um, I think it's Justin Fields going to Chicago. I love Fields. And I'm telling you, before we made that trade. I thought we were taking him. I texted you and I said, I think we're taking him. I was around here. I was walking around the house. I'm clapping. I'm like, we got him. We got Justin Fields because – I think that dude is going to be that good in the NFL. I just do. Um, I, I mean, I, I've given my opinion on fields. I, but slowly as, you know, time kept going on, I was getting more bought into him. I thought he, if you go back to the first episode we filmed, I thought for sure bust and slowly, but surely he was gain. I was gaining more respect for him. I was watching more on him. He's definitely not as bad as I thought. And I thought for sure. And I was with it in the, and, you know, I was watching with a couple of friends. They were with it too. If he was there and we stayed at number 12, he no doubt whatsoever would have been the pick. Because here's what happens if, if say we stayed at 12, say we did not make the trade with the Cowboys, the Cowboys select Micah Parsons still with that pick. Yeah. They got their guy, they got their linebacker. The Giants just drafted a wide receiver. They would have drafted Devontae Smith. In that yeah, league. they had Devontae Smith, yeah. But it's not a, a Gettleman move to uh, – Gettleman does not trade up. Uh, he's been a GM for multiple years, not just with the Giants, but with other teams. He's never traded up in the draft ever. So that's why I, I think the Eagles knew that. I think they had an opportunity. And at the end of the day, I mean, if you really think about it, the Eagles end up getting their guy and plus a first round pick and only end up giving a third round pick. Plus they save a lot of money, not picking him within the sixth pick instead of picking him at the 10th pick. That's something people don't think about how he rose. I know when you talk about getting the guy, yeah, they, the Devonte Smith was definitely on there. I think he was their guy. I really do. I think I, I think, disagree. I think they knew for a fact Smith was going to go five. I think everyone kind of thought that. I think obviously there was like inside sources. People were really, you know, Burrow must, been, Burrow must have been really pushing that. I think Waddle, I think the Eagles would have been happy with Waddle, but I th- definitely think they would take Smith over Waddle. I do. I think they made the trade at the time that they did because they thought before with the six pick that, hey, they might have a chance at Kyle Pitts being there or at Jamar Chase being there. And then, like you said, then it kind of got, pretty certain that the Bengals were taking chase and then when no one you know really made a trade with the Falcons or there weren't any rumblings and it's like all right the Falcons are taking pits and that's when the Eagles made their move and not to say that you're you settle for a guy like Devontae Smith that, that, that's not settling at all no that's not then you do you do get one of your guys you know what I mean like you you, you get a very solid player well I definitely I don't know about you but when J.C. Horn went off the board at eight to the Panthers, which, which was a shock. I definitely still think it's a good pick. I think the Panthers were really trying to trade out of that spot, and they weren't able to, so they kind of just took – they probably had that scenario. You know, they probably planned out that scenario, said they were going to take J.C. Horn, which is a really good pick. That team is, you know, really solid. That adds another great secondary piece, obviously. How's their offensive line? Their offensive line is okay. It's solid. I, I would, honestly would have picked Slater in that spot, but they went – Exactly. Like for me, I think, they were, I think they were really banking on somehow, some way Detroit pulling a Detroit, hoping that Dan Campbell and they also Detroit also has a new GM. They make mistakes. I think the Panthers were really banking on them possibly making a mistake and not drafting Sue out, but they ended up taking them. They weren't able to get Sue out. So I think they kind of just took the guy they believed that was best on the board. I think they, I mean, a lot of GMs from what I read, believed that JC Horn was the better cornerback than certain, which uh, listen, you can make arguments for both. I both think they're great. Uh, but I definitely think the Panthers were trying to trade out of that spot. I don't think they wanted anything. You know, I don't think they wanted to pick at eight. I think they wanted to probably possibly gain another third round draft pick, move back a couple spots and maybe have a chance to take Slater at a pick they feel more comfortable at. But uh, JC Horn's not a bad pick. But what I was saying is that pick was like the only time in the draft that I would kind of panic a little bit. I was a little, you know, I was kind of hoping at the end of the day we would get Jace. JC Horn and I was thinking, you know, I'd be really happy about that. And that's when I kind of knew this draft, that was a huge pick that would, that really swayed the draft because I think the Broncos really didn't know who they were going to pick either. Another team that wanted to trade out of their spot end up taking best guy available in certain, which screwed up the Cowboys bad. Cause yeah. I think the Cowboys obviously were banking on getting certain. I'm happy they didn't get him. I mean, obviously they end up getting Michael Parsons. That kid is a stud, but you know, I think then the Cowboys were like, wait, I'd rather trade back with, and I think that's, I honestly think that's when Howie Roseman saw his plan. I think he immediately was like, I have to call the Cowboys. I have to make this trade. I know the Giants are going to take, you know, I know the Giants are going to take Smith and he made a great move. And we got the guy that, you know, 
some people didn't think we were going to get. Some people did think we were going to get. We ended up making a great move. And, you know, there's a lot of excitement. This is the first time in a long time where I leave, I, you know, I go to sleep on the first round of the draft and I'm, I'm genuinely excited with the pick we made. I like all let jokes aside. I haven't been excited like that in a long time. Before this show started, I was thinking to myself, like, I can't remember the last time, you know, whence I was extremely hyped for, but he was like the last pick in my lifetime that I was hyped for. Other than uh, Wentz. I was opposite of you. Uh, I was opposite. I did not want to take Wentz. I was not bought in on it. I, I wanted Ramsey, I remember. I really wanted us to take Jalen Ramsey. I mean, that was like the last pride, you know, time in my life. I'm trying to think. Devontae Smith, I was hyped for. I it's always a different element though with getting a quarterback. Like it, that's a whole franchise. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, different, yeah, yeah. Like wide receiver is exciting. It's cool. Cornerback, cool, whatever this and that, but nothing beats drafting like a quarterback. Like that's why I mean part of me was excited. Like I was like, I thought we were gonna take fields and I was excited for it. I'm not gonna lie. I was I definitely was like, man, I was starting to look up some Justin Fields tape again. I was like, Could you imagine what that would have done to this fan base? Because that would have been no, because I think I, – I personally think that every logical football fan, a.k.a. me, you, people that actually watch the Eagles and know how the draft works, knows for a fact that at number 12, if Justin Fields is somehow still on the board, you take him. You have to. You have to take him at 12. Take the best player on the board at the time. Yes, you take the best player at the board, whether you desperately need that position or not, and especially a, a team like quarter, – like I'm in a position like quarterback. It's the most – valuable position in sports they get paid the most money for a reason and you know that's that's my point exactly you take the best guy on the board I would have been happy with Justin Fields at that spot even though I'm not completely bought in on him and when you talk about you know pick the best player at the board at the time you're very high on this guy I think Carolina made a mistake taking J.C. Horn especially with a guy like Sertan still there I don't or get, think, or get Devontae Smith. Like, you know, like we had a conversation last night. You want Horn or you want Devontae Smith? And in my opinion, I wanted um, Devontae because – And I wanted Horn. You wanted Horn because obviously Horn's a stud. But I wanted Devontae because our wide receiver room is terrible. But in Carolina's situation, who do they have to help out Sam Darnold? I just personally, like, I mean, I, I think you can agree with me too. I definitely don't think Carolina was looking to pick in that spot. I think – you know, if I, I noticed, I watched their time go down. They were down to like 30, 40 seconds. I definitely think they couldn't make a deal happen. And then probably for another a minute, 30 seconds, they all sat there and decided, listen, who are we going to take? Who did we like the best? And they went with Horn. And I sim and it's similar to me to the Broncos. I think the Broncos tried to trade their pick, couldn't, and went with the best guy available. Why did the Broncos not take Justin Fields? Why? from what I hear, they are, they are the closest team to getting Aaron Rodgers. You got to get out of here with that. No, I'm saying that's what I'm, that, that, really? those are the rumors. Rodgers wants us to go to three teams. One, the 49ers. That's not happening. They just drafted Detroit. Raiders. Raiders. That could definitely happen. And then I the would Broncos. go to the Raiders if I was Aaron Rodgers. I would too. I think you, that, that would be, honestly, that would be the best situation for. Automatic, football. automatic Super Bowl contender. Yeah, and that would be the best case scenario for football. Team him up with John Gruden, who I hate John Gruden. I think he's a really overrated coach. But and put him in Vegas, putting Aaron Rodgers in Vegas. That's the best thing that could ever happen to the NFL. They got Rugs, they have Josh Jacobs, they have Waller. Waller. And that defense is not bad. And also they just drafted a stud offensive lineman. It was a little bit of a reach, but that kid's a stud out of Bama. Yeah. So I mean the Raiders have talent and they've got a solid defense. I'm not a big believer in John Gruden. I don't know how him and Aaron Rodgers would get along. But you know what? That's two uh, big egos. That's two big egos in that locker room. But you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna have to give up a boatload for Aaron Rodgers, even though he's 37 and obviously probably doesn't have realistically more than four or five years left in the tank. You're giving up three first round picks for a guy that makes your a team an instant top four team in the NFL. It puts you it puts you in that Super Bowl conversation immediately. And did the Raiders beat? I know it was regular season, but the Raiders Jeez. beat yeah. the one time and they gave him a pretty close game the second time around. Now throw Aaron Rodgers in there. Aaron Rodgers has some playmakers along with a good defense. Watch out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think you can agree with me that, you know, for the last couple of years, Las, Las Vegas has definitely had a really solid team. I just think the issue is, is that I don't think John Gruden has personally ever really been bought, like bought into Derek Carr. I don't think he's ever really loved him. 
So also Steelers just took Najee Harris. That's a great pick for them. They, they picked the right guy as well. Just putting that out there. Just literally that just happened. That's good. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah. This, is where, this, is where, this is where the, the red pop-up comes up yeah, on the screen. They, they picked the right guy. That kid, that guy's going to make an immediate impact. He's 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 him and, him and Etienne. I love watching. Yeah, I think they're going to be top running backs in the league right away. But that's that's off topic. Sorry about you think that. Think Etienne's getting drafted or not? Uh, I think the Bills are going to take him. Yeah, I think the Bills. Oh man, that'd be trouble. Yeah, that would be scary trouble. <laughs> that would not be good for us or for any team in the NFL. But yeah, I mean, Vegas, Vegas definitely. That would be like, I mean, that would be the most. Uh, Roger Goodell would like, like, piss himself in excitement if Aaron Rodgers ends up going to Vegas. But also, listen, don't doubt John Elway, man. He is the he's like an he's insane when it comes to the GMs. He'll trade up, he'll trade the whole package for, he'll trade everything for Rodgers. And that team's also really solid. He it's would do not well. like they have the draft capital to make a move to get Rodgers because they just made that Khalil Mack trade a couple years ago where they got everything. You know, yes. Khalil Mack. They got picks on picks on picks. So trade them. Give them whatever the Green Bay asked for, trade them. Because like you said, you know, it might be two, maybe three years max with Rodgers, but three chances at a ring. Yes, and fans and fans in Las Vegas, that would be so perfect for the thing, uh, for the for the league. I, I just feel like it's time. I think Aaron Rodgers is sick and tired of Green Bay not picking, like, who he wants to be pit, like, who he wants to be at. I also think Aaron Rodgers is, you know, Aaron Rodgers is, is a diva. There's no denying that. He's definitely had – he definitely has his character issues. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. And I think, you know, he's always wanted to – I think he kind of wants to pull a Tom Brady. I think he wants to go to another team and try to win there. I just don't see him finishing out his career in Green Bay. I think you can agree with me. And I don't know whether it's going to be the Broncos or the or the uh, Raiders. I'd love to see him for both teams, honestly. I'd really like to see him as a Raider. But, yeah, I definitely don't think he'll be playing for Green Bay this year. And Green Bay doesn't need a quarterback. They're, if they trade if they trade Rodgers, they're going to want picks. and it, Picks on picks on picks. They're not going to want a team's quarterback. They're not going to want Andrew Luck. I mean, uh, they're not going to want Drew Luck, and they're not going to want Derek Carr. Because they, I think they're believers in Jordan Love. So, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a really crazy next couple of days for the. NFL. I saw a stat today, or just, I, like, no, it's not really a stat. I saw something on Twitter today. So when you look at the, um, you know, the all-time quarterbacks in Green Bay history, Brett Favre, or Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers. None of them made it to their 17th year with the team. Aaron Rodgers has currently played 16 seasons with the Green Bay Packers. This upcoming year would be a 17th season. You know why I don't find that stat so crazy? Because a lot of the NFL quarterbacks don't even make it to like year five on their contracts. I know, but I'm saying uh, I thought it was cool because when you talk about those are their, those are the great Green Bay quarterbacks. Green Bay era. Or just great, not Green Bay, just great quarterbacks in NFL. And yeah, now it's most likely they're going to have the same – departure in green bay where they leave before their 17th season i can honestly see this as a win for both teams because i think i wasn't high on jordan love at all last year i thought he was a bit of a bust but i think getting a year under aaron Rodgers is great i don't think the coach over there is any good i think matt lafleur is just kind of there i think aaron Rodgers is the coach no, so he's not good at all. but yeah when was lafleur hired to he, that this was his second year so coming up will be his third he probably wanted Jordan Love. Yeah, I mean, Matt LaFleur, though, I mean, I think everybody can agree that that guy is really just there. Like, Aaron Rodgers is coaching the team. He's just – has to be – like, he's just the guy with the title head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to get into uh, – on what you thought, honestly, of – I get Devontae Smith. We're really high on that, and I like it a lot, but – I kind of thought for a little bit that the Eagles might have should have taken Slater. I don't know if that's me being dumb, but I just think Slater was a like a, a really, really, really good player. And another thing is we got to build this O-line. And the thing that I also want to point out is the fact that everyone's really hyping up this duo, Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith teaming back up. It's not like they really played much together in college. Yeah. 
they got a couple months in. Devontae Smith wasn't a starter on the team at the time. He caught the touchdown to win the national championship when Ertz got set. Hertz got sad for Tua. But it's not like they really played together. It's not like it was like a, you know, it's not like a Joe Burrow, Chase Young situation. It, it's literally like it's kind of that was it's not on that. It's not on that level, but it's kind of like um yeah, I'm trying to think right now. And what excites me, what really excites they me about some chemistry, they know each other's style. Yeah, and what excites me about it is it feels like as it keeps going on and on, all I ever hear is positive things from people that have played with Hurts or even played against Hurts about how awesome of a guy he is and how like people want to play with him. He's somebody you want on your team. Yeah, I, I still I got to see more out of Hurts. Yeah, I got to see more out of Hurts too. Do I, I don't, think I don't, I don't question his leadership? There's heart or or like that. at all. Not at all. I don't question it at all. I know, not I know at all. top tier, the best that it can be, but I question his talent. What I do question, what I do question is I feel like when he steps back in that pocket, the first thing on his mind is run. I, I want to run. Yeah. And until he shows that his first, and I think maybe getting Devontae Smith now, when he drops back, his first option might be, you know, look towards Devontae and see, and then maybe run. And you know what? That's some progress. But until he switches that mentality, I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to have a successful career. I also want to point out the fact that we potentially still have three first round picks next year. We at least have two good chance. We have three. If you know, Carson Wentz plays decent next year, next season. He's got to play all 16 games. Yeah. Which, you know, we'll see what happens. But, no, no, he's, not, he's, not, he's only has to play 80%. 70, yeah, he's 80%. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. Obviously still two first round picks. Uh, I'm going to be honest, Jim. I'm going to start looking at prospects, quarterback prospects for the next draft. Uh, I just don't think Jalen Hurts – I think he's just set up for failure. It's it's just a shame. But, like, I just don't see him being able to win in, in this offense. I mean, no matter what you want to say, the offensive line is mediocre. I get we're getting Brandon Brooks back. Kelsey's still solid. Lane Johnson, I, I like him, but he's definitely not what he was. And, you know, Miles Sanders, obviously great but our wide receiver core is still horrible. Like I saw a thing ESPN posted right after we took Devontae Smith to like the Eagles offense with like heat emojis, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, and Zach Ertz. And Zach Ertz isn't even going to be on the team within the next couple of days. That I, I, I just said LOL to that. that. That's still a horrible offense. One thing that Nick Sirianni needs to do that Doug Peterson did not do this year for some reason, I'll never know. In my opinion, Miles Sanders is a top 10 running back in the league. I agree. Prove to me otherwise. The only thing that anyone has against him is the guy does not run the ball. He has no carries whatsoever. Yeah, he never runs. Yeah. And I saw a stat like he had he had the same amount of 50-yard rushing touchdowns this year that like the top three running backs had, and they had like 50 more carries. So that's what you got to love about Sirianni because obviously he's coming from Frank Wright and the Colts, and they're a run-first team. They run the ball all day, all night long. That's why they brought back a guy like Jordan Howard and I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they pick a running back within one of these, you know, in later picks. I could see him definitely adding another guy. They still got Boston, Boston Scott there. They, I, I don't know. I mean, I doubt it. Corey Clement's probably still going to be invited to training camp, but I definitely still see the Eagles picking up. Sirianni's going to want three running backs. He's going to want three of them. If there's one position that I do trust Ty Rosen with, it's running back because every year, or you know, whenever he does pick a running back, it seems to be a good one. Breaking news, breaking news. Travis Etienne off the board to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Teaming him and uh, t- putting him and Lawrence back together. Uh-oh. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think that's necessarily the right pick for them uh, with, you know, they, James with Robinson. Urban Meyer? Yeah, but James Robinson had a great season. I, I think they could have used – they could have probably picked somebody else. But- Price, 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 Price. You want Travis Etienne or you want James Robinson? You're right. You're right. No, you're right. And teaming him back up with Lawrence. That's just a crazy pick. I did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. That's insane right there. That's that's hype. Yeah, that's, that, that's crazy. They're going to win two games. That team is still horrible. Yeah, but but the, having those two now for the next five or six years? Because Etienne, right. running, back, running back careers are short. Trevor Lawrence is going to play, obviously, close to 15. But He's going to play 20 years. If, yeah. if, all, if all works out, when you pick somebody number one in overall, you expect at minimum 15 years out of them. Yeah, Lawrence is 21 round now. I expect he's going to get to at least 36. But then you get ETN. ETN's going to have about five or six good years in him. He's a stud. Yeah. 
Yeah, and obviously, I mean, you, you know, James Robinson, I don't think is going to come out and be unbelievable again, but he's definitely, he definitely can play. He's definitely a good running back. It's good to have two guys there. Yeah, he's not, he's good to have back up ETN. They're ETN. building, they're building up, a, you know, they, they're building up a solid little offense for him to start his career out there. I know they added Marvin Jones and I know they, you know, LaVisca Chanel, the rookie last year had a solid year. He, and they have a, they also have a Travis uh, or Tyler Eifert there. Obviously I know his, He's not what he was. He's yeah. He's a good veteran guy to have out there to learn from him. And he was a pro bowler at one point in his career. So I think, mm-hmm. I, I think he has a little bit of a better setup than most number one overall pick quarterbacks have coming into their rookie season. Yeah. No. I, um, so I got to ask you now, what are your thoughts on your boy, Trey Lance? Did you expect so, that? Be, did you expect that? Be honest. No, I thought for sure Mac Jones. And honestly, it was the dagger to my heart. I think it made the draft a little less exciting. I was really hoping they would take Mac Jones because I'm not going to lie, Jimmy. I still had faith. I still had him back in my head. Maybe he's there at 12. Maybe he's there somehow, some way, and the Eagles can take him. But, oh, man, the Niners hit it on the nose. And I do – I you know how yesterday they said, oh, we have our pick set in stone. We know who they're taking. I think yeah. that was a lie. I think they changed their mind. I think they – decided they're going to take – I think John Lynch – I know John Lynch really loved Trey Lance, but I don't think uh, Shanahan did. But I think John Lynch was able to convince him otherwise. And I think the whole entire scouting department and everybody, you know, I think, you know, they were able to convince him about Lance. Lance is a stud, Jim. I mean, he is. And he's – like I just said, you know, how Lawrence, they're putting up there. He's jumping into a team that's really good. That team is not – that's he's not going to play, though, this year. Yeah, he's probably not going to play. Jimmy Garoppolo is your Alex Smith. Trey Lance is your – I'm not saying Trey Lance is Patty Mahomes, but Trey Lance is your Patty Jim Mahomes. Patrick Bring Mahomes. in a guy upside, huge upside, that gets to know the system for a year, and then boom. Because now I, I mean, the Patriots have their quarterback, so they're not trading for Jimmy yeah, Garoppolo. and I like – They have their quarterback. They're not trading for Jimmy Garoppolo. And I also, I also like the fact that uh, they're able to get a guy that uh, – you know, Jimmy Garoppolo is a guy that learned under the best. He learned under the best quarterback to ever play this game. You know, he got some wisdom off of him. So he'll be able to translate that to Trey Lance. Trey Lance will sit a year. And also Trey Lance is jumping into a perfect situation. That's not a dysfunctional organization. You got a guy like Kyle Shanahan who's had success literally everywhere he's gone. He's a phenomenal head coach. And, he, you know, I think he, he can, you know, really tap into his potential. I think he can really open up everything he's got. Plus you're teaming him up with – I think Brandon Ayuk coming into his second season, going to be going into his third third season, is going to be a great player, like a really, really, really one of the top wide receivers possibly in the league by the time he takes over. They're going to have a ton of running backs. I mean, next year they'll probably end up drafting one too. They always do. They're running back by committee. Yeah, I mean, they got Coleman. They got, you know, they've got a ton of guys over there, all really solid. Moister. And, sure, uh, yeah. And uh, what's his name, who I, I always was a big fan of. He played for the Vikings. He's – I, I forget the oh, name. Oh, um, uh, he's a great Brita. Brita. Yeah, no, no, not Brita. Brita's uh, over with uh, Brita's with Miami. Uh, I forget his name. He, Jared McKinnon. Jared McKinnon. 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 Another good player. Obviously, George Kittle's the best, one of if not the best tight end in the league. And sure I'm sure uh, Debo Samuel coming back, a guy that was hurt off last year, had a great rookie season. They're gonna build up. You know, they got a solid offensive line. They'll make the right picks. Their defense is really solid. Nick Bosa coming back. I honestly – I wouldn't be surprised somehow, some way, obviously, if the Chiefs keep their team going and Brady's still in the league, they're still there. But I really see them as Super Bowl contenders in in 2023. Like I, I, I really I – per, I really do, Jim. I think – In 2023 or 22? 2023. So not this year, the next year. Okay. So I don't see him winning the Super Bowl or anything like crazy like that coming into this year, but the next year I can see them winning the Super Bowl. I really do. Like I said, I, I, I'll continue to say it. I don't deny Lance's athletic ability or anything like that, but another stat came up tonight when they were talking about the draft. And to me, it's alarming. Like, it's flat-out alarming. The last 10 quarterbacks to win the Super Bowl, the last 10 years, the last 10 quarterbacks, to, or no, no, not the last 10 years, the last 10 quarterbacks to win the Super Bowl, guess how many career passing attempts they had in college? Oh, a ton over over like 1200 1200 passing attempts in their college careers okay how many passing attempts in college does your boy trey lance have 348 318 bryce this man has not played in college 
And I listen, and I respect. And, and I have not, like I said, I don't doubt the athletic ability. Is the film? He's a stud. He runs people over, and he could sling the ball down the field. But he played two years ago in 2019, through all those touchdowns, no interceptions, whatever. And then he opted out of the season last year due to COVID. The dude has not played in two years. Can I make a quick, let me make a quick point? Let me make a quick point. Can I make a quick point? Go for it. Have you noticed? I don't know if you've watched interviews about him. Watch him talk. He is unbelievably mature. And you don't see that out of a kid like that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, the maturity off the field, okay. But when it comes to maturity and experience in that. And but, that's what's huge, but that's what's huge about him potentially sitting out this whole entire season and getting to learn. That's huge. The difference between him and with Wentz is Wentz played throughout college. Trey Lance didn't even play at a lesser level of college football because that's literally what it is. He won a national championship and never lost the game there. He won a national championship at the FBS level. I know, but you, you would be ripping him apart if he didn't win it. The North Dakota State winning championships, they win them every single year. It doesn't matter who their quarterback is. They're I know, but, Alabama of I know, but one, day, one day there's going to be a guy that goes there as the quarterback and doesn't win a national championship, and it's going to suck to be that guy. But it wasn't Trey Lance. That's all I got to say. I'm not denying the kid's ability to play. He can play. That's a concern when you only throw 300 passing attempts in your college career. That, Jim, you're not wrong whatsoever. You're not wrong whatsoever. It, it is definitely a concern. But now that's me, why I, that's where I agree with you. I don't think he could have gone to a better situation. better organization. He could have not gone to a better organization. Now Maybe the go, Patriots. Now go, yeah. Now if you go to a team like Denver or you go to a team like Carolina, now he's in a quarterback competition. He's probably going to get thrown into a fire of an organization that are just awful. And I'm not uh, Carolina's not bad, but you know Denver hasn't been good since Peyton Manning left, and now Trey Lance has no experience, and now defensive tackles from the NFL are coming out. Yeah, I think a huge difference is I much rather have Kyle Shanahan be my coach than Vic Fangio. Oh yeah, especially yeah, Vic Fangio is defensive minded, and then, and that shows too because he picks her team. Yeah, I, I think I think you know it, and I know it. I'm surprised no one thought of that. Because no one thought of that, Sertan to Denver. Yeah, well, I was actually talking to a Broncos fan yesterday, and he said, I said, who do you think you'll take if you go at nine? I said, I think you'll take Fields, because I thought Fields would definitely be there at nine. And he said, yeah, possibly him. Uh, he's like, we're definitely not going to take defense. And he actually said, uh, we're especially not going to take cornerback, because we're already stacked at that position. But I think Broncos took best guy available, and you can't fault them for that. Can't, never. You can exactly. never – listen, one thing about the NFL, you can never have too many good cornerbacks. You can never have too many good ones. True. It's, 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 think, it's, they're always rotating in and out. They're always, you know, putting in a different – you can put them in the nickel. They get hurt. They get hurt. And yeah. it's, it's probably the biggest position when injuries, honestly, next to wide receiver and running back, it's probably right there with injuries. You're involved with every single play. You're cutting all the time. You're, you know, you're making swift – Yeah, moves. like if you look, I mean, we don't – we're not good at quarter, cornerback position at all, but like – you know, we were able to move Jalen Mills outside cornerback. We put him inside the nickel. We put him to safety, free safety. You know, you can move guys like that around. And Sertan's that type of dude who could definitely play multiple positions in that secondary. I personally see Sertan, like my comparison to him is a Jalen Ramsey type player. I think he can come in right away. And I think he can just be like, like Ramsey was like some years it takes cornerbacks to develop a little bit. It takes him a year or two to get used to the league. Like with Ramsey, he jumped in and he was like the best cornerback in the league. I, I see similar stuff with Sertain. And same with Horn. I think they're just both studs. I think they're going to both immediately be great players. I think th at the end of the day, even though the Panthers and Broncos were probably looking to trade down, I think they're very happy with the guys they got. Yeah, I kind of think um, Carolina's getting, you know, J.C. Horn kind of trying to fill that gap that Josh Norman left. That and obviously – They're a feisty corner, tough – their second cornerback on their team, guess who their second cornerback was this season? Rasul Douglas, baby. That's right, baby. Rasul Douglas. I'm a big fan of him. I really am. I think he's I think he's a, a great backup guy to have. I do. I think he's a great guy good to have. Quarterback, not good when you come to the Eagles. Anywhere else, he'll, he'll succeed. No, I mean, he did okay there last season. I saw he, you know, he had his ups and downs and stuff like that. He's definitely solid. He's a guy you definitely want on your team, but I'd much, oh, rather, have, I'd much yeah. rather have J.C. Horn. I'm telling you, the Panthers, man, if 
I think Darnold ends up having a solid season there. I definitely think they're going to be a good team. I definitely think they'll make, I definitely think I can see him making the playoffs. Not a high, maybe wild card, something like that, but they're definitely not a bad team. And I think Matt Rule's a great coach along with you're getting the, I mean, arguably, in my opinion, I think he's the best, the best running back in the league in Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, he's a stud. He's flat out all around. Yeah, and plus Robbie Anderson and Sam Darnold teaming back up. It's the only wide receiver that Sam Darnold had success with in his three years there. And DJ Moore is coming into a huge year. I think he's a, I think he's a great player coming off a year that he should have been better and he wasn't. And, you know, I just think I could see Carolina having a sneaky good season for sure. Yeah, when you look at that team, they're definitely still young. Um but like you said, they could sneak in with a wild card. Matt Rule, I definitely think, is a much better coach than Adam Gase. So they're right away. Sam well, Donald have more success. I'm, a better, I, I'm making this claim right now, and I'm sticking to it, and I don't care. Anybody can argue. I believe that I would do a better job coaching an NFL team than Adam Gase. <clears throat> I do. I, I, I really do. Quote me on it. You, you taking offers? I'm taking offers. And I think a lot of people would back me. <laughs> I, I really do. I, you got my vote. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but yeah, so I think Carolina, they're in good shape. It, it's interesting to see who they're going to pick the rest of the draft because they definitely have holes that they need to fill. Um, so and what, in your opinion, who, who would you love to see the Eagles pick in the second round? Because I know my guy. I know who I want the Eagles to take in the second round, but I'm curious. Who do you think? You have to take a cornerback now. 1,000%. Um. Mm. there's a right answer to this jim there's a right answer there's a correct answer have? to this. asante samuel jr out of florida state is that a reach though i know it's not a reach i think he honestly could be a first round pick a real late first round pick he's going to be an early second round pick he's going to go high he's going to go high in the second I round know. i, I just want to pick him because of the height that surrounds it i have a I'll i have a big to get us, I, I used to have a Samuel jersey. I'm gonna break it out, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, it's gonna be tight on you, but it's gonna, you know. <laughs> Still, you gotta rock that. Uh, though. And now, honestly, how I see it, Jim is uh, obviously yes. There's going to be hype uh, surrounding him. He's come, you know, his dad, his father was a phenomenal player for multiple years, but I think he's a great player. I've watched a lot of film. I actually watched him. I've watched a couple of Florida State games. I don't know why, because they were painful to watch the last couple of years. But yeah, I definitely think he's another guy that. I think you need to definitely get a young guy that's got a lot of potential to team up with Darius Slade to listen Slay's there obviously to be, you know, our number one cornerback to be that, but he's also there. He's an older guy, Jim. There's no denying that Darius Slay is not in the prime of his career. He's nearing the end. No, he's on the downhill. Yeah. So you need to get another young cornerback in there to, for him to teach, not an Avante Maddox, not a joke guy. You pick in like the fifth round and hoping pan out, not a Jalen Mills. You want to take a guy that you know that, He's got and I'll tell you what, ball. and I'll tell you what, you get a guy like, say, Asante Samuel Jr. or any other cornerback that they're looking at, and you immediately take those two rookies, you match up every practice. I do not care. Obviously, Slay versus Smith, there's, that's going to be a matchup. But take that rookie cornerback and put him up against Devontae Smith because those two are only going to get better. You know what I mean? Devontae Smith, obviously, Heisman winner, you know, destroyed college football last year yeah it's so cool to have the heisman winner on our team that's really cool to like it's that. crazy yeah they finally pick an alabama player the eagles and alabama players over the last couple of years uh i'm just gonna say their wide receivers pan out julio jones calvin ridley amari cooper i mean their wide receivers pan out they play well in the league yeah so that's what gets me excited about the pick so uh yeah. translate. everyone everyone talks about you know uh Devontae Smith's size and stuff like that. I think that's just just not true. Like, yeah, I mean, like, all right, he's Speed small. He kills. Speed. Exactly. He's small. All right, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, he's been small his entire life. Not small, but he's relative also, below. Also, listen, the NFL, I'm, listen, college football and obviously Alabama have phenomenal trainers, but the NFL has the best trainers and the best nutritionist he will put on weight i'm expecting him to put on probably 10 to 15 pounds he's never going to be a big guy he's not built to do that but i don't care i don't he's going to be a a, a burn and turn guy he's going to make crazy catches going to do this and that uh, you can say with any single guy anybody drafts they can get hurt 
Travis Etienne, he's probably got a ton of injury history. Ton of injury history. Najee Harris probably has a ton of injury history. It's the way the league, it's the way anything works. I'm sure Jalen Waddle has the most injury history. He's coming off a really bad injury. Etienne got, got Etienne got hurt against Ohio State in the semifinals, didn't he? Yes, and I'm just yeah, he was out. And I mean, the biggest thing to me, Jalen Waddle, the second wide receiver taken off the board, is coming off a really bad injury at the sixth pick. I know everyone. Everyone's talking about you know you know Waddle's speed and stuff like that, but the last time we saw Jalen Waddle on a football field, he did not look good. And he was hurt. He was hurt, and I know he rushed his injury back and stuff like that. And now he'll have time to rehab, and you'll get him in with NFL trainers. He was definitely not rushing his injury back because Alabama was scary. Listen, the fourth, the fifth wide receiver on Alabama is still a number one wide receiver in the country. Like. You realize Nick Saban's getting the number one wide receiver in the country every year. He's had when's the when's the last time you remember a wide receiver like at least two wide receivers not going in the first round? Like an hour. Are you are you covering your mic? I, I don't know if I. No, I get, am I covering? Yeah, my mic? Now you're good. Now you're good. I'm sorry, my bad. No, 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 you're good. I just I was trying to hear your point so I could be able to go off, and I couldn't. He was like, no, but I'm saying like, what, uh, like when's the last time? Well, I was saying like an Alabama wide receivers, you know, Nick Saban gets the number one guy wherever they are, wherever they're from every single year. When's the last time like two Alabama wide receivers weren't taken in the first round of a draft? Like if you really think about it. I know. Look at, I mean, last year was Ruggs and Judy. Yeah. I know Calvin Ridley went the year, you know, Amari Cooper. Like, I mean, they're obviously not like the first two rounds, but when's the last time there wasn't a wide receiver that went to Alabama that wasn't taken within the first 10 picks? Like think about it. No, they, they, they bring wide receivers in. They they develop them really well. Because those guys, I mean, those are the type of guys that, like, I know this sounds crazy, but you it only happens here and there. Those are the type of guys that are ready for the NFL, like, out of high school. They're so good. Last year, Alabama, around the NFL, there was – Alabama had 22 NFL starters at each position. They had a starter at each position from their program. That just goes to show how much of a juggernaut they are, and that's why you got to pick guys like that from – Systems that schools. the NFL from top schools, and you know, I'm excited to see how this hurts thing rolls out. I still want to bring everyone back to earth. I know how it gets exciting around the draft, I know how you can get up and win now. I want everyone to realize the Eagles are not a win now team, they are no way, shape, or form in a win now mode. Our division has gotten a lot better. Washington's looking solid. I'm happy they didn't end up getting a, a quarterback falling to them because that would have been scary if they would have ended up with a Fields or a Jones. But, you know, they're looking solid. The Giants, you know, they're looking really solid as well. And the Cowboys' offense is going to be deadly. And their defense got a lot better today with picking a guy like Michael Parsons. They're going to have, a re- you know, two really solid linebackers on their team, even three solid linebackers on their team. They're going to get better. Every team in our division today got better. In my opinion, Eagles – as it is right now, dead last place. Dead Absolutely. Last place. I just don't see, like, everyone and everyone keeps arguing me and saying, I, at best, at best, Jimmy, best case scenario, I see us winning five games. At best. Like, at the we very- looked at the schedule a couple weeks ago when we brought Kevin on, and they're not really – They're not they're a four-win team. They're a four-win team. They're, they they're, say uh, that the Eagles have the easiest schedule, and then I look at that schedule, it's not easy. No, it's not easy at all. I know we play the Bucks in the in the in the and the Chiefs, which is terrifying. That's just like that's the scariest thing ever. The only thing that can potentially get them to five wins this year is that extra game that they have to play now because the season got extended. Other I agree. That, other than that, they're not because you know what they they might get you know the game at the end of the year, whoever they play. I don't know who they play. That team could be in the playoffs already, so they're not going to play their guys. They're going to rest their guys for that week, and they're going to. Be able to get away. Also, I think you can agree with me on this point. Joe Flacco's playing this season. He, he he is playing this season, no doubt. I can see him starting two games, maybe even three games this season. Get get him going with Devontae Smith. Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, the Devontae Smith pick, one, it kind of pisses me off a little bit because everyone, all the draft experts, everyone was saying, you got to get this guy, Devontae Smith. I mean, he was – number three on Mel Kuyper's draft board on McShay. I think he was number five. Like everyone knows Devontae Smith's that kind of talent. Okay. Last year, everyone knew Justin Jefferson needed to be picked with that pick. And you go and you try to outsmart the experts, all the analysis, everything like that. 
Could you imagine the situation we'd be in right now? We'd have Justin Jefferson. Now, depending on how this season goes with injuries and stuff like that, maybe this year you'd be able to take an offensive lineman. Or imagine you link up Justin Jefferson and Devontae Smith. Yeah, I mean. Or imagine you make that trade up. Maybe, you know, say you got the 12th pick as it is. Then you could trade up even further to a Carolina or something like that and get your cornerback. Now you're in such a much better position. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree. I, I agree hundred percent. I think the Eagles finally, and especially Howie Roseman, I tweeted today and I've been saying for a long time and you know me, Jim, I am a Howie Roseman guy. I know that song. It's crazy. You like him. I have no idea why you like him, but you like him. Cause I have faith in him, man. I do. I think he makes phenomenal trades and you know, people at first were not liking the trade that we made going six to 12, but man, did it turn out great for us. And I think you can agree on it. It turned out so, so perfect for us. We end up getting you know, the same type of guy and to me, I mean, I think he's making all the right moves. I tweeted today and I said, I know this is hard for you Eagles fans, but have faith. Howie Roseman will get the job done today. And I think you can agree with me. He got the job done today. And it's, that's still, my, it's still early. I want to see how next year's draft turns out. But, but what I'm saying is I'm feeling very comfortable with the position we're at considering the fact that we're definitely in rebuild mode and we're potentially have three first round picks next year. And we got the guy we needed this year at wide receiver. And, you know, we got a solid little team. We still got the a couple little young guys here and there, but we're definitely in the right direction towards, you know, building this team. We're going towards the right direction. At first glance, I did not like the trade. You know, when I first saw it pop up on my phone, I'm like, you know, what the heck is this? I was opposite. I was the opposite of you. However, he made the right decision tonight. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, next year obviously who he picks with those picks but also i think that Devonte smith gives the eagles organization a little bit of flexibility because now if you look at it like this okay you could tell the fan base you could tell jalen hurts we got your guy all right we brought you in a number one wide receiver so now i just say there's no excuses but okay jalen hurts now show us what you can do throwing the ball however if jalen hurts struggles this year He's still on that rookie contract, so you'd be able to unload him. He might have some value because he played all season. Or you have three first-round picks. You could call Seattle up and say, let's get a deal. Bring Russell Wilson to Philadelphia. <laughs> You're so big on that. I love. I would love Russell Wilson. So would I. They were, they were calling about the Sean Watson before everything came out about him. Yeah, well, I don't even you know. They were that. calling I, I'm being honest. I, I could see Deshaun Watson never playing in the league again with the way this thing's going. With the way it sounds. Yeah. Russell Wilson, obviously, is still on the market. I don't care what anyone says. He's not happy in Seattle. He's definitely not. He's not. Uh, listen. None of these very, quarterbacks are happy to where they are. Rodgers wants out. Wilson it's similar. Out. It, you know, Pete Carroll is very similar to, uh, I want to say, Urban Meyer. It always ends up. Like, it, yes, the mayor. It, yeah. At first, yeah. the marriage is nice. It's really nice in the middle, but then at the end, it ends ugly. It ended ugly for USC. It ended ugly when he was with the Patriots all those years back. He, you know, he leaves on ugly terms, and clearly, him and, uh, you know, him and uh, Russell are definitely not on the same terms. I don't think they've been on the same terms for quite some time now. But Russ wants to win. I've always thought that Pete Carroll's been in Russell's corner. I'm not sure if the GM and the whole organization has been in Russell's corner. I just find that so unbelievable. I mean, he's a top three quarterback and they don't, and they, and, and they want to get rid of him. There's definitely, there's definitely some break off, some dissension in that organization because I think Pete Carroll's on his side because of the decision that he made with that third down play on the goal line. Yeah. So there, I think he was on his side, but I think the organization was more on the side of, the Legion of Boone, Sherman, Chancellor, Bennett, Wagner. They like those guys because those guys were brought up before Wilson. Yes. They're a defense wins champ. I mean, they're big on defense. Exactly. So I think that there's some kind of like the GM doesn't want to bring in anybody for Wilson because he probably thinks that Wilson's, you know, closer to the end. Pete Carroll wants his guy Wilson to succeed. I don't know. I think Wilson's definitely going to be gone. Within the he, next would not, he would not finish his career in Seattle, that's for sure. No shot. No chance, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. When the Eagles made the trade today with the Cowboys, which 
It's also shocking. I never think division rivals, rivals for, should ever trade with each other. But uh, I thought for sure Zach Ertz was involved with that deal. Dude, could you imagine him in, him in a Cowboys uniform? It would be ugly, but listen. I don't even think he would like it. We have to unload Zach Ertz. Uh, we got to get rid of him. He obviously does not want to play with the Philadelphia Eagles anymore. He wants to play with Wentz. My prediction is for that, I see the Eagles moving up maybe about six to seven spots in the second round and uh, drafting a cornerback higher and dumping Ertz at the same time with that other pick just to move up six spots. spots. I, with Zach Ertz, it's about dumping his salary, honestly. That's, that's what this move's about. It's about dumping salary. Yeah, well, Ertz, obviously, before the year started, he won the contract extension. He Which how he made that, but how he made a phenomenal move not extending him because I didn't want to extend Ertz because I knew I like Zach Ertz a lot, but I always believed for the last probably year and a half he's not even the best tight end on our roster. I think Dallas Goddard has much more potential than he does. I know that sounds crazy, but it's no, just, but I know, I know, but uh, when Dallas Goddard is Eagles do a good job of developing tight ends. They've had some yeah, solid tight ends over the years. Brent Selleck, Ertz, Burton, uh, Goddard. You mean the GOAT. Trey Burton is Oof, the GOAT. Burton. Um, you know, they they even Richard, even Richard job. Rogers is doing a good job. At, you know, he's had a couple of Not bad. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, they've done a good job with tight ends. Zach Ertz is the all-time best tight end that ever come in the Eagles. I just don't want to see him leave. I can't see him in another uniform. I, I agree, Jim, but Listen, it's a business, and Zach Ertz is not nearly what he was. I mean, he's just not. He's not. He's not. But, Bryce, how bad did you want Jenkins? You know what not I mean? Bad. I did not want Jenkins that bad. Stop right now. Stop, lying. Stop right now. Don't I'm, not just I'm, your own video. You know, me, you know me very well, Jim. I'm very into developing young talent and getting rid of the old before they stay too long. You thought we should have kept Jenkins though, at the end of that year. I know you. I know you wanted to keep him. I didn't. I want. Yes, I obviously wanted him to play for our team. But did I want to pay him thirty million dollars guaranteed? Absolutely not, because he's not worth it, and he's not. He didn't have a great year for the Saints. All right, I agree with the paying of the money. I don't think Ertz is asking for a lot of money. I really don't. I think he no, truly Ertz, loves Philadelphia and wants to play in Philadelphia. No, Ertz. Ertz, from what I heard in all the reports, he wants George Kittle, Travis Kelsey money, and he's not nearly like them. He's not. He's not even. You can't even compare him to Travis. Kelsey and George Kittle. Those guys are freaks. Ertz can't break a tackle, Jim. Let's cut to the point. Let's. I, I, I'm not trying to hit low, but I, I have never I'll seen how it. you really feel about Zach Ertz now after all these years. I, I, I've always was really high on Zach Ertz. I was always a big fan of him, but he has his problems, Jim, and his he is well past the prime of his career. It's time, Dallas. If this, is, this is going to be Dallas Goddard, what, third or fourth hey, year? Man. Hey, you can come on. I wanted Devontae Every, Smith. Liam Davis. Bergman. Liam Bergman and I sat in this room. We're going over my draft. We're writing everything down. He thought that the Miami Dolphins were selecting Devontae Smith to team up with Tua. I kept telling him Jalen Waddle. No, Jalen Waddle was confirmed. That was like confirmed. that. Was, I tried telling him. I, was, I wanted Devontae Smith. You guys got a steal for that one. An absolute steal. Like that. That's yeah, like, no, I like, I like that too. I like that too. Listen, I like Devontae Smith a lot. And I think he's going to come in. Like I said yesterday, he's NFL ready. He's going to catch 65 to 75 so balls. Next so excited. Year. Now you bring in a guy like Devontae Smith. Does that take pressure off of Jalen Rager for him to go deep and get out past the secondary? Jalen Rager did not have a bad season last year. He didn't. No, he, he hurt. didn't have a bad he he didn't, didn't hurt. He, you know, Jim, wait, he didn't have a bad season. He had actually a god awful season. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when you look at Jalen Rager, he did not like, like, like a god awful season. He was and obviously the issue he did not have a bad season. He came in with high expectations because everyone was pissed off that we didn't get Jefferson. Then you look at Jefferson having literally the best rookie season since Randy Moss. I was gonna say the that issue. The issue is like the great Kevin Gasandi said. Every time you hear Jalen Rager, Justin Jefferson is gonna follow. I know. That, He's going to come right after, and he's never going to be Justin Jefferson. Never compare other people with other people. Never do that. All right? I mean, got Jalen Rager. That's part of playing a sport. You're going to get compared to a guy like, you know, Trey Jones and Luka Doncic are always going to be compared to each other because they were traded to, for each other. It's the Jalen Rager is his own person, his own type of talent. He will do much better this season with Devontae Smith now in the lineup because he takes a little bit of pressure off. I'm not saying a lot, but a little bit of pressure because now teams have to – 
all right, let's watch this guy. You know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna not you're not gonna not cover the Heisman winner. No, um, I mean he's gonna make a lot of exciting plays. He's gonna make an impact for the Eagles, but it's like I said, is he gonna make the four win Eagles into the eight win Eagles? No, he's not going to. No, no, and I, and that's why I was saying that gives us Eagles flexibility because it's not like they're gonna win a lot of games this year. They're not. You give Jalen Hurts his guy, see how they play together. If it's good. All right, keep Jalen Hurts another year. If it's not, bye bye Jalen Hurts. Let's welcome in a new quarterback. Let's draft somebody. You know, no, I mean? we'll still have a high pick with the fifth pick enough to trade up. We'll have picks to trade. We'll have draft capital. That's what really makes the, this actually really exciting because most teams coming into a rebuild, rebuild are obviously disappointed. No team ever wants to rebuild. You want to compete every single year. You want to, you know, you want a chance to win a Super Bowl no matter what anybody says. You always do. It may, it's a perfect example. Is we're huge Philadelphia 76ers fans. Yes, we, you know, the rebuild, you know, we hated every second of the rebuild. It was brutal. Those four or five years where we were the worst team in the league were brutal. And for once, you know, I see the Eagles coming into a rebuild mode, but it's going to be like an exciting rebuild, similar to like the Miami Dolphins. They're, you know, I, I, you know, the last couple of years, I think the, it's going to be exciting. I think you'll be, the, you know, Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts is going to get his, you know, he's going to get his time. He's going to get his, you know, it's official. Jalen Hurts is the guy now. He, we didn't, we didn't take Justin Fields. We, I mean, he must feel actually pretty good right now because I'm sure he was sitting down on his couch wherever he was, really nervous, knowing that Justin Fields was still there and he knew that the Cowboys and the Giants weren't taking quarterback. And knowing that Justin Fields had the opportunity to fall into our picking. And even when we traded up for him, listen, Jim, I know about I don't know about you, but I still thought we still might take Justin Fields with that pick. Bryce, when you texted me, I was so excited because I'm like, wow. I was too. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was excited too, and I would have been really I, I would have been really happy with him there because I still think at number ten he shouldn't have you know he should have definitely been taken by then. I think the you know the Bears got a great guy at eleven. Lied to Andy Dalton, told Andy Dalton he was gonna start. Poor QB one a month later they bring in Justin Fields. <laughs> yeah, rough day to be Andy Dalton, or actually not because he's still getting paid like twenty million dollars. I think Andy Dalton starts the first couple games for Chicago though. I think Andy Dalton's solid. I think uh, I think he doesn't get enough credit. I think he, you know, he almost won MVP that one year. He did almost won MVP one year. AJ Green would have won that for him though. Listen, he's not bad. Andy Dalton is not bad. He's not a bad. Not bad, but he's not good. Yeah, I would love him as a backup. He's a great backup to have. I'm just saying. I'm putting that out there. Yeah, but yeah, he's not a QB one. Yeah, no, he's definitely not a QB one. Uh, yeah, the Bears needed to make that move. Ryan Pace definitely needed to make that move to uh, keep his job as GM. Because how do we feel about how do we feel about the Patriots right now? Yeah, your nail, Mac Jones. Steal. It's a steal. You, bust. You think, bust. I get. I get. You think it's a bust. Uh, I like Mac Jones a lot. I do. I, I, obviously, he's got his issues. Obviously, he's got the body of like the P- Pillsbury Bears boy. Like, did you, see, did you see that side by side they did with? Mac Jones yeah, and Tom Brady, and someone yeah. like tweeted like Brady loves guys who look like this. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, I think we all knew it. Belichick was never trading up. Whoever felt him, felt him. I think he knew, and I, I don't know about you, but I knew too. When Mac Jones didn't go number three, I knew he was dropping fifteen, and I would have told you that. I knew for a fact he was not. No team was going to trade up to take Mac Jones. He was going to fall all the way to fifteen, and Belichick knew that. You know, I think NFL GMs are like anything. They talk. People talk. You know what I mean? It's like life. I think everyone had the feeling that Mac Jones, if he didn't go through, was going to go to the Patriots. He did. Um, do I think Mac Jones learning under Cam Newton is good? No. They're two completely different quarterbacks with two completely different styles. Uh, I can see them both playing this season. I don't see Mac Jones sitting out the whole season. I think he's going to get in. Obviously, Cam Newton, he's a walking injury. He gets injured all the time. I think Mac Jones is going to play. This year, I think maybe he doesn't play fantastic this year, but I think give him two to three years, I definitely think he's going to be a solid player. I think he fits that Bill Belichick scheme very well. But another thing I want to point out, and I always say this to people, one thing about Bill Belichick is no doubt whatsoever he's the best NFL coach of all time. But he's far from the best drafting head coach of all time. He misses all the time on the draft. And I can name countless times where he's missed picking, you know, everyone talks about us picking J.J. Argo Whiteside over D.K. Metcalf. He picked – Nikhil Harry over DK Metcalf. Nikhil Harry's been, been pretty terrible. He I mean, also he also made the single greatest draft pick that this NFL has, has ever seen. Yes, one thousand percent. I'm I'm not going to deny that. But Jim, you know, and I know, he's not the he he's nowhere near. Listen, I think the best drafting head coach of all time is a guy by the name of Andy Reid. 
Solid. I actually saw the other day they have a guy on their team they drafted in the fourth round. Uh, Sneed is his last name. He's a he's a cornerback slash safety. They did a redo of the mock draft on ESPN. Guess where they had that guy going? With like the thirteenth pick. Like like uh, and he got him in the fourth round. And uh, plus Andy Reid drafted Fletcher Cox. He drafted Patrick Mahomes. He drafted. I mean, you could just need Tyreek Hill. I mean, that guy's – I think he's the best drafting, to, you know, Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey. I mean, he the guy's draft a ton of Hall of Famers. I'm he, just did he that. draft Travis? I don't think he did. Yeah, he did, 2000, 2011. Oh, he third, did? Third round. That was the same year we took Danny Watkins in the first pick, and he quit football to be a firefighter. Hope things are doing well, Danny. Shout out to you. Did, did Danny get picked before Travis Kelsey? Yeah, Travis Kelsey got picked in the, like the third third round. Oh my god! <laughs> have you have you seen the 2011 NFL draft? It is possibly the, it's possibly the best NFL draft of all time. And every year or every time I see it, it makes me cry because literally you're like, it's Patrick, it's literally Patrick Peterson stud, JJ Watt stud, oh my, Cam Newton stud, Von Miller stud, Danny Watkins. I'm like, who who? I'm like, how did we pick that guy? Like, how did we fall on that guy? Richard Sherman. I mean, I were, look at that. <laughs> oh, you, you'll cry yourself to sleep. It's such a good it, – it it's, it's literally every single buddy in the first round is like a stutter <laughs> has made a football, except for Danny Watkins. Oh, He's man. So, <laughs> so brutal. Danny Watkins. Ten years later. Ten years later. Man, I hope he's serving. You know, I hope he's part, you know taking their fires. I hope he's doing well. I hope he's doing well, really. Uh, yeah, I hope he is too. Philadelphia legend. Well, yeah. um, I don't know about you, but Bryce. Tonight's been fun. Good recap. Um, Wait, what do you grade? What do you grade the Eagles scale? You know, like eight F. What do you grade the Eagles pick? A minus. I couldn't agree more. I was going to say A minus. A minus. A minus B plus. They're right on the fringe. They're right on the fringe because. Thank you for being realistic. Thank you. I was. I was, I didn't want you to say A plus. That would have just been a weird. No. No. Um. A pluses if you get Kyle Pitts somehow, some way to yeah. me. Uh, Another guy, I mean, whether you want to say it or not, I don't believe De- Devontae Smith was the best guy on the board. Yeah, Justin Fields was. That, and I also think, I, I know you don't want to hear it, and I know it's not the sexy pick, but I'm in please don't, don't, Please don't please don't piss me off before I'm about to go to bed right now. Please don't do that. Slater was probably technically the right pick. I'm not – no, don't get me wrong, though. I, I'm happy with that pick. I, I, I understand. Gonna... All right, he's good. He's very I, good. No, if it, Chargers no. got a great – the Chargers got a great pick out of him. You get some protection for Herbert. Herbert's just going to excel over there. Yeah, he's he's next. He's going to excel. He's gonna Absolutely be... excel. That yeah. team's going to be loaded. Um, But I get where you're coming from. But like you said, next year we got three first-round picks. I could – if I had to put my money on it, say Jalen Hurts has a good season this year. I'll put my money on an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, and probably like a corner next year. You know what I mean? I mean, the ideal situation would be if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out, quarterback, offensive lineman, cornerback. That would be. I think when you look at offensive lineman, you got to get a center next year because I think Kelsey's last year is this year. Kelsey's de- definitely done this year. He's there. So no- I think you got. I think you got to pick a center next year. But like, I understand our offensive lineman last year. I think we had. 26 different offensive linemen com- combinations, which is absurd. And that can't happen if you want stability at the quarterback position. Well, hopefully another guy, another, another guy who hasn't gotten a shot yet, Andre Dillard. He was still a first-round pick. Arguably, he was the number one guy in that draft that year. He hasn't gotten a chance to play. And, yes, he's been disappointing. And he was having a horrible sp- uh, training camp before that happened. You know, he's still got to get a shot. Hopefully, from right now, they haven't signed him. And please uh, – was Howie, if you're listening to me, because I think you are listening to the podcast because you have listened to some of my tips. I think he is listening to the podcast because he heard us last night, made a decision today, obviously, traded up third round. So, yeah, he's definitely listening in. Yeah, no, he's definitely listening in. Howie, I hope you know I've been backing you. I'm the only Eagles fan in the country that has been backing Howie, you. Howie, I have no faith in you whatsoever. <laughs> I know somebody other than you made that pick. So whoever made that pick, I thank them. I also wait. I want to. I want to take back something real quick. I do want to take back something. Take back something. I was. I was a big hater on Nick Cervani. Nick Cervani, however you pronounce the name. 
You saw that video with him throwing footballs outside the stadium. Yes. <laughs> now you love him. I don't love. I don't. I don't love him, but now I can root for him a little bit. And he's getting better. I, I was listening to an interview with him and Harry Rose. Told you about this weeks ago. His passion for the game of football is unmatched. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's he tough. really loves the game. It's tough to bounce back from that interview because it was atrocious. But up there with Adam Gase's. Up yeah, there. yeah, but Adam Gase was also like on like Adderall. That guy wasn't even like. I mean, Nick Cervani was dead sober. He just like talks like that. Yeah, he's just getting adjusted. I think you know, I I like him a lot better now. Do I still think he's gonna do anything special with the Eagles? I still get him. I still see him getting fired in two years. But you know what? Today was a great day to be a Philadelphia Eagles fan, and I haven't been able to say that in probably about three years. Honestly, today was a great day to be a Philadelphia Eagles fan. I feel like finally we're our you know our head is pointed in the right direction. I do. Wow. I'm still interested. I'm still waiting. I, I need we made the right move. We made the right move tonight. Tonight we made the right move. Finally, for once. Um, it still makes me upset because I think we should have made the right move last year. We wouldn't be we wouldn't even be in this position this year. But anyway, that's beside the fact. Um can't dwell on the past. The rest of this weekend, we got a lot to look forward to. We're gonna see if Zach Ertz gets traded. Obviously, we're gonna see if the Packers move on from Aaron Rodgers. That's gonna be interesting. I think that the Eagles, like you said, we got a good cornerback um now because when you look you feel the need of wide receiver all right you get a good guy in that room the cornerback position is definitely light um i wouldn't be surprised if howie tries to snag a defensive lineman or an offensive lineman you know no, yeah man, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna film another episode uh coming up at the end of this draft when the draft's all said and done we're definitely going to talk about some picks i mean there's still a ton of picks the eagles still have a ton of picks and there's still a ton of you know we could still draft a ton yeah, of players that I Go ahead. I think we could still draft a ton of players that could end up being all pro studs, could be the best player to ever play the game. You never know. I mean, there's plenty of guys that go in the fourth and fifth round and end up being excellent players. Oh, no, there's know. definitely uh, there's definitely going to be studs out of the later rounds in this year's draft because um, it's I mean, so deep. Tom Brady, Tom Brady was a, you know, a, a six-round pick. I mean, 199. It's the example I always use. No one's already you know. Tom Brady, though. We're not, no, no, but I'm saying, okay, I'm saying there's always going to be – a you know, you can always draft – Diamond in the rough, definitely. Yeah. You can always draft the stud. I also do think uh, I want to point this out there. I do think an Eagles take. I do think the, the Eagles take a quarterback in this draft. I do think they take a quarterback. Now, where do you think Kyle Trask has fallen? Uh, I heard the Steelers are really into him. Uh, I heard I, the Buccaneers would pick him with that last overall pick. Well, they just picked. They just picked Joe Trojan. <laughs> Who's like that? Trojan Con, like Trojan Con. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was, who, 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 who is that? He's a linebacker out of I don't know where, but yeah, he took Kyle Trask is not. I, I was gonna say if they pick okay. Kyle Trask, doesn't which, matter. They're winning the Super Bowl again this year. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm, I'm, I listen. I told you, Jim. I they bet signed Antonio Bucks. Brown back. Come on now. Yeah, I bet the Bucks. Listen, Jimmy, I showed you. I was betting the Bucks the whole entire playoffs. I, I was. I'm a believer in Brady. I don't doubt that man anymore. Never doubt. Never doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. uh I think uh, Kyle Trask, I think the Steelers will take him. I do. I think the Steelers might reach on him a little bit in like the second or third round. You always have to account the Steelers are going to take a wide receiver in the second or third round every single year for the last 10 years. They take a wide receiver either first, second, or third round. And for the last 10 years, they always, they're going to take a wide receiver in one of those spots no matter what. So, yeah, I think the Steelers take it. I don't think Kyle Trask is anything special. I don't think he has an NFL arm whatsoever. Uh, I've watched, I actually watched a lot of videos on him in college. I, I don't even think he was phenomenal in college, honestly. I just think Kyle Pitts really made him look a lot better than he was. And plus the Tony, who just went first round to the Giants, also made him look a lot better. There's always a lot of talent in UF. They always have great wide receivers and great tight ends. They do. They, 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 they develop really well over there and, you know, they get impact players. Uh, another quick thing before we go, I want to mention he's back. Ooh. Tim Tebow is back. Tight end Jaguars. Imagine that offensive unit: Lawrence, Etienne, Tebow. I mean, Super Tebow, Super Tebow, Tebow hasn't played since 2012, so nine years. That's actually wild that he's going to come back. Real, actually, quick, real quick, off the top of your head, before we go, who won the draft tonight? Uh, I'm going to say the Detroit Lions won the draft tonight. Man, you love Kenny Sewell, dude. Do, do you know him? Like, what's going on, dude? Do, do, are you guys friends? <laughs> he's. he's a, I think he's a. I think he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think he's going to be phenomenal over there. And I think 
I, I got to give a shout out to the Lions. I said yesterday when we filmed, I talked a lot of trash on them. I said they always pick the wrong guy. They don't do well. Tonight they made the right decision. They picked the right guy, and I'm, I'm back and forth. Who do you think won the draft? I think the Chicago Bears won the draft. I think you finally get some stability at that quarterback position. You trade up not as much to get a guy. But also, has, you, can't, you can't say who won the draft yet. I mean, obviously, there's still six more rounds. More I, I, I'm just saying the first night. The first yeah, night. first night. Yeah, no, yeah, but again. Just, yeah, face value. You, you got to agree with me, man. I mean, Penny Sue, oh, that's the steal, man. Getting on that seven. He should have not been there. He should have won at five. I feel like you guys are buddies or something like that. That's why I'm not going to say anything. But, I, I mean, if, if Penny Sue went to the Bengals – I bet you said the Bengals are winning the draft. No, I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have. <laughs> I, I, not, I also want to say my sleeper team that also won the draft, you're not going to agree. You're going to disagree heavy. You know where I'm going with this. The Giants. Patriots. Oh. No, I think the Giants actually made a bad pick. I think the – I, think I don't they, think so. They got a lot of – they got picks for next year. No, no, I'm saying – I'm saying no. The, I mean the guy they picked. They picked that wide receiver out of UF. I think that was a reach. I think they should have taken uh, Elijah Moore out of uh, Old Miss. I think he's a better player. Than yeah, that. Giants are good at developing wide receivers, though. I yeah, mean, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, if that kid even becomes half decent, he'll end up being a success over there. It's not like, I mean, they, they still they don't expect that kid to be the number one. Yeah, they got Slayton, yeah. they got Shepard, and obviously they just paid Gallaudy $70 million for a reason. So, yeah. yeah, it was a good pick. It wasn't a panic pick. They more picks. They more traded back. I mean, that was a great trade for them. They are, they get a pick. Yeah, yeah. that's – yeah. Also, right, right. You know what? I, think, I also want to say real quick, one more thing. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Before we go. <laughs> Jacksonville Jaguars also did very well. I, I like – I like. I'm a big fan of get, uh, adding – obviously, Trevor Lawrence is Trevor Lawrence, but also getting Travis Etienne, his teammate, to pair him up. It's always good to get a familiar face in a locker room. I was just about to say, when it comes to comfort, comfortability, that helps Lawrence make his adjustments to the NFL. Urban Meyer now will be able to look at film from Clemson's past couple of seasons, they'll be able to see what kind of plays work well with those guys. Like I tweeted earlier, ETN's the next coming of Jamal Charles, I think. I agree with that. I think that's a perfect comparison. Fantasy stud. Stud. PPR legend. Legend. Drafted him both years he tore his ACL. Still hurts. All right, brother. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate this. Everyone we'll tune in. We'll, we'll be coming out with an episode at the end of the draft. We'll talk about our winners and losers and uh, get into more of what the Eagles do. 100%. And see, I'm, I'm really excited for the second round. I'm, I'm really, real, real excited. To see, I'm excited to see where they end up. You know, the owner, it's going to be crazy these next couple of days. Eagles are finally on the way up again. We got Devontae Smith, Heisman winner. Let's go.